Don't worry about me. I'm going where I always wanted to go. And when I get there, I'll be saying a prayer for all of you. This is our last week together. We've journeyed with Father Capon and with all the men around you and, and with men around the country as we begin to ask ourselves, does the life of a simple Catholic chaplain from Kansas really matter? And did his life affect lives all around the world? And for me, as I told you, the first time we gather, the answer is a resounding yes. I think back about our earliest week here, where we broke open the life of Father Capon, and you heard person after person, none of which knew him, tell you stories of how he touched them. I think about the virtues that he shared with us, from forgiveness, to faith, to hope, to love, and to courage. I think about all the challenges that you've accomplished over this six-week period. I think about the fact that you've said three Hail Marys each morning and each night. You've memorized the 23rd Psalm. You've got an accountability partner in place. You've put yourself in a situation where you've allowed God to love you for at least 30 minutes and hopefully more. And you've written a letter to a person that has been inspired you with the virtue of hope. To me, our journey has been a journey where we've come closer and closer to God through the lens of Father Capon, a simple priest from Kansas. My hope as we go to the last virtue I want to talk to you about is that you realize that Father Capon is not a seven-week journey. It's an opportunity for him to point you to Jesus and ultimately to direct your entire life. And that leads me to the last virtue that we want to talk about. It's the virtue of being missionary. Our Pope Pope Francis certainly has consistently challenged us to be missionary. And as you learn today, you're going to see that Father Capon himself wanted to be missionary, not just in the United States, but in other countries. And he found himself in a different way, on a different missionary journey. And I would say to most men that I encounter, we're all called to be missionary wherever we find ourselves in life. We're called to be missionaries in our homes with our families. We're called to be missionaries in our churches as we inspire and encourage other men to come closer to God. We're called to be missionaries in our communities as we serve the poor and serve those that are hurting or broken around us. And lastly, we're called to be missionaries at work. Not all the way screaming and yelling and standing on chairs proclaiming, but doing it the way Father Capon inspired his men to do it, by the way we live our lives. People look at us and they see us and they wonder what makes us different. The same things they wondered about Father Capon. And I would say to you as we learn today about the missionary zeal of Father Capon, that you ask yourself, where is God breaking your heart? Where is he calling you to go? I would say to most of us, it's probably not to stand up and scream and yell, but it's to live in to this mystery of being a person who calls himself Capon's me. Perception I grew up a missionary was that it was to get on a boat and to go to Africa or go somewhere, anywhere. And it typically, for some reason, it was out of the country. That was a missionary. Um, and then as you get older, you know, a missionary, we can make a mission, you can make these trips. Uh, and certainly those are, are great things. But I think now to the point is missionary is going out. It doesn't matter distance. It's really going outside of my own comfort zone. Throughout his, his military career, Father Capon always was with the soldiers on the front line. Uh, one of the people that I was able to interview was a man named Tiber Rubin. Uh, Tiber was a, a Jewish man uh, who grew up, who was born in Hungary. Uh, he was in Auschwitz, and I believe he was the only member of his family that survived Auschwitz. Uh, when he was liberated from Auschwitz, he had promised himself that he would do something to repay the United States for liberating that prison camp. He was able to do that in, in that he came back or he immigrated to the United States and he decided the perfect way to repay or to give thanks to the United States was to join the military, so he joined the army. So Tiber Rubin found himself being shipped over to Korea 
uh, his commanding officer knew of his history and he told Ativer that he did not need to go to Korea knowing that he had survived the prison camp and, and Tiver wanted to be with his friends. He said, these are my friends. They're the only people I know. I want to go there to be with them. So he went there. Um, actually, Tibor Rubin received the, the Congressional Medal of Honor about 10 years ago uh, for, for actions that he took during, during the Korean War. Tibor told me the story about being out in, in uh, the midst of battle. And he said, there was one day, he said they were under terrible fire. And he said, everybody was kind of spread out over this field. And he said, we are all hiding in whatever little gully that we could find. He said, I just had this feeling that, that I was going to be killed. And he said, a well-founded feeling because he said, whenever I would raise my head, he said, bullets would go over my head. Uh, so he said, all of a sudden, he said, uh, he was there feeling sorry for himself. And he said, he felt a hand on his back. And he said, he turned around and he said, it was Father Capon. And he said, here Father Capon was, and he said, I'm Jewish. He said, why was he coming out to me? And he said, Father Capon put his hand on my back, and he said, he, he said do you need to talk? And he said, I was just there, and he said, I just, I just got this amazing sense of peace. Or he said, this sense of peace just came over me. And he said, Father Capon was there, and he said he was assuring me that everything was going to be all right. Uh, so he said, we talked for a little bit, and he said, uh, as Father Capon always did, he said he had his, his pocket stuffed with fruit, uh, stuffed with whatever food that he could find. So he said he pulled out a piece of fruit, and he said, he asked me if I needed something to eat. So he said, of course, I took it. Um, but he said, then, then he told me, he said, well, I'm going to have to go on. And he said, but, but before I go, he said, do you want to pray? And he said, well, well, sure. And he said, so then he prayed the Hebrew scriptures with me. And he said, here Father Capon was. He said, he didn't have to come out, come out to, to meet me. He didn't have to do anything with me. He said, but, but he came out and he came to me, a Jew, and he gave me comfort. And he said, that's when I knew that he was a saint. He said, it didn't matter what he did or didn't do when we were in the prison camp. He said, I knew he was a saint from that moment on because of his care and because of his willingness to come out and to be with me. He appealed to everybody. When, when, when he would pray, it, it wasn't meant for any specific religion. It was for everybody. It was like big arms around you. When he prayed, it was to the Muslims, it was to the Christians, it was to the Jewish, it was to everybody. When he prayed, it took in everybody. It didn't just take in one. If I were a missionary, I, I would hope that I could be one who would, would engender the kind of loyalty that Father Capon did, not by uh, uh, having to preach to a point that somebody accepted my doctrine, but that I could, uh, just by sharing my living with them uh, and doing everything that I could to enhance them and their way of life, while at the same time teaching them the fundamentals uh, of God and as, as the core of all of that engenders all of this purpose. That would be the ideal way to be a missionary. And in that sense, that's exactly what he did. When I think of, of missionary, um, you, know, you, you think of um, spreading uh, the good news, spreading the truth. Um, and obviously, Father Capon, um, in, in what he did, was a missionary, just by the fact that, that he interacted with other people. I don't think you have to go to over, overseas to be a missionary. You can be a missionary in your own home. You can be a missionary at work. Um, you can be a missionary at the gas station. It's just the, uh, the, the true foundation of a missionary is a call to serve. And I, that's what Father Capon did. And I think you know, we're, all, we're all called to be missionaries. We're, we're all called to be evangelists at some level. It may be in the form of contemplative prayer. <laughs> it may be in the form of leading a men's group and anywhere in between. But if, if we're Christians and if we're Catholic Christians, we're all missionaries. How does missionary look? It looks different, I think, for all of us. And I think that goes back to um, really praying to the Holy Spirit, to uh, sinking what His will 
um, is for us. And I think he's going to make it real obvious what missionary, whether that's in the local community helping start a soup kitchen or serving on a soup kitchen, or whether it's serving your parish at, at the parish office or, or work in a, an altar society uh, bazaar. We have all kinds of opportunities to be missionary, but I think it's got to get past how uh, having other people do it and, uh, and each one of us doing it. As men, um, I think most of us are, are wired and have been trained to uh, go get it. The money, the house, um, the fame, the fortune. And so we, we go at breakneck speed. And you know, we think we're doing the right thing. We're supporting our family, we're feeding our family, we're being the breadwinner, we're doing that. We're going, going, going. Well, when you, when you go at a breakneck pace and you think you're doing the right thing, we do miss the people that we pass by, including our family sometimes, because we're going so fast. And, and so in order to, to see those people and not miss them, we have to slow down. God will put the people and situations in front of you. You don't have to do any of the heavy lifting. You don't have to do any of the work. But what you do have to do is you have to slow down and be receptive to those experiences that are about ready to come at you. Missionary. That's a word for a lot of people that calls out a lot of different things. And I want you to understand that for me, that word has become part of who I am. Early on, I introduced you to certain parts of my life, my sister's story, my father's story. And I want to leave you with a story of a simple family in Eastern North Carolina that began to listen to God's will and see what God does. Because June the 7th of this past year, our family completed giving away and selling everything that we owned. We took myself, my wife, and my six children, and we left everything we had known. Not because we were crazy, as certain people in our families and our community said, but because we were inspired to be with Jesus and to serve Jesus in a world that is broken. And I tell you this because part of that journey has been Father Capon. Part of that journey has been his undying trust and his love for God. And, and for people like us is to live into that mystery. So I would say to you as we close, your journey is not necessarily like mine. You're probably not called to give everything you have up and to serve God as radical a way as that is. But what I would say you're called to do is to figure out in your community what breaks your heart. The last challenge you have is when I'm done talking today, it's for you as a group to take a few minutes quietly and not out loud and not in a group, but personally to ask yourself, what breaks your heart? And each of us has been given by God a specific area where He does want us to make change and to affect change. And so the challenge is once you know what breaks your heart, it's not enough just to know. If you read the Acts of the Apostles, they had to move. And so I challenge you this last week of Capon's Men, that when you know what's breaking your heart in your communities and in your families and in your churches, that you do it. You do it. Because Capon's Men, there were a lot of things that I've heard that have described them this seven weeks. The one thing I've not heard anyone say is that they stood still. They moved. You are called and I am called to move into a world that so greatly desires what we have. Forgiveness, faith, hope, love, courage, and a zeal to live as missionaries. Capon's men are called to all of these things. So we begin the journey now.